This video is all about the Nintendo Switch. I'm calling it Nintendo Switch Hit and Miss, or Nintendo Switch Pros and Cons. I'll be giving five reasons from my point of view of why the Nintendo Switch could succeed. I'm also going to give five reasons of why the Nintendo Switch could fail. Now here are five reasons why I think the Nintendo Switch could fail. What's with the focus on motion control? When the Wii came out in 2006, Nintendo finally, for the first time since the Super Nintendo, won the home console war. They dominated. They dominated the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Motion controls have now become a fact. The reason why the Wii was so successful, there was enough hardcore gamers still getting the Wii. Yes, I'm one of them. But mostly they, uh, it, it sold to a lot of families, like soccer moms, casual gaming, gaming dads, mostly because they wanted to play Wii Sports. And that was basically it, just Wii Sports is what they'd play. The Wii succeeded because the mo they started the motion control fad and they, and they did a good job with it. They made it work fluently. I mean, there were some issues here and there, but it worked. They even improved upon it with the Wii Motion Plus. It was so big that Microsoft came up with the Xbox Connect where they did that motion control where you use your body. And um, that didn't really take off as well as the Wii motion controls. Because the hardcore gamers who got the Xbox 360 didn't really care about that. They just wanted to play their hardcore games with the controller. I mean, when the Xbox One first launched in 2013, it sold horribly, actually. Because their original Xbox One forcefully came packaged with the Kinect. And people didn't want to pay an extra $100 to get the, to be required to get connect with their Xbox Ones. It ended up costing $100 more than the PlayStation 4, despite the PS4 actually being the more powerful system. It wasn't until Microsoft eventually released an Xbox One without Kinect included that they started selling a lot better. And the price was the same as the PS4 when that change was made, and people actually started buying Xbox Ones. Yeah, now both of them have dropped in price a lot. Sony also came up with the uh, PlayStation Move. That was the biggest ripoff of the Wii by a major company I'd ever seen. The biggest Wii ripoff by far is the V or whatever, which I remember seeing that ripoff console at, the, at CVS on multiple occasions. I never bothered to get it. I was like, I already have a Wii. I don't need to get some knockoff V. But the PlayStation Move was really just a ripoff of the of the Wii remotes. Well, the PlayStation Move obviously didn't last. <laughs> no, it did not. When the Wii U came out, Nintendo kind of drifted a little further away from motion controls. They still include motion controls with some of their games, but most of them didn't didn't really. It wasn't really like a requirement. Pad. I'm tilting the gamepad to control this wheel. So as a result, I mean, it's pretty clear to me that motion controls were just a fact, and the fact that. Nintendo is focusing so much on motion controls for some of their launch titles on the Switch. That's a bad sign for me. Because honestly, the people who were interested in the motion controls weren't even hardcore gamers. Mo most of them weren't. Um, and, they simp and they already got what they want. They got the Wii, they got the Wii Sports. That's all they want to play with those motion controls. I mean, unless maybe a new Wii Sports comes out for the Switch or something, then maybe. But I gotta be honest, I'm not too impressed by 1-2 Switch. That game doesn't really look that interesting to me. It might be okay for some, like, really casual gamers, but for hardcore gamers like myself, that game does not really look that interesting to me. Wii Sports was a lot of fun. It was. Great launch title. I played it with many people. Then, uh, there was Nintendo Land on the Wii U. That game was pretty fun. I liked, I enjoyed the mini games on it. Um, but it didn't have as much replay value as Wii Sports. 1-2 Switch, it doesn't really look that interesting to me. I, I'm not too confident about that. And ARMS, I'm probably not going to be really into that game either. So Nintendo, please, let it go, alright? Xbox has pretty much, Microsoft has pretty much given up on the Xbox Connect. Sony gave up on the PlayStation Move long ago. Motion controls are a fad. People don't really care about them now. They're a fad. The Nintendo Switch doesn't have a really great launch lineup, to be honest. Yes, they're launching with Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. That's going to be an awesome game. But I, as a Wii U, as a Wii U owner, don't need to get a Switch. 
that's also coming out on the Wii U at exactly the same time. In fact, when the Wii came out in 2006, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess was a launch title for it. It came out for the GameCube a month later, so those who wanted to get le to play the new Legend of Zelda game right away, they had to actually buy a Wii to get it, and that helped with that was a great selling point for the Wii when it first came out. People still did get it for the GameCube as well, not as many because the GameCube was a failure, was a failure, unlike the Wii. The only like game that people are really stoked about on launch day for the Switch is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. But because it is also coming out for the Wii U, that's gonna deter it a little bit because while the Wii U has been a commercial failure, people who have the Wii U, like myself, could just get the new Zelda game on that system rather than spend an extra $300 to get a Switch to get one to get that one game. My honeymoon of excitement for the Switch at launch day was is over. I, when I first heard about reservations being available at, get, available at GameStop, I went ahead and put a reservation down. But at my fiance's advice, she said, why don't you wait for reviews before you get the system? And then I looked at the launch title, I, I also looked at the presentation video, I looked at the launch titles, and I was like, I think she's right. I should wait. There's not too many games I'm really excited for that are coming out at launch. I'd rather wait until the holidays when the price goes down. There is a, a game I'm definitely looking forward to that is a launch title, but you know, I'm willing to wait to get it because I'm not that excited about it, but Super Bomberman R. That sounds like an awesome game because it's been too long since there's been a Bomberman game and there haven't been enough of them. And some wondered if there would even be any more Bomberman games since Hudson Soft was bought out by Konami. No, I don't really care about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Reason why is because I already have Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U. But those, but I guarantee you a lot of people will be excited about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Switch. So that's good. But that's not a launch title. It's going to take a couple months for that to come out. Same with many other games. And as for Mario Odyssey, that's not coming out until the holidays. So I, I kind of would just rather wait until the holidays before getting a Switch because you know, I, I, I mean, that's when Mario finally comes out. And I'm going to get Zelda on the Wii U. I don't need to get a Switch to get Zelda. I already have a Wii U, so I'll just get that version. One game I, I am looking forward to is Puyo Puyo Tetris. My fiance and I love to play Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which is a Sonic version of Puyo Puyo. But this is, and we also play uh, Tetris DS as well. So we like both games. So I do look forward to Puyo Puyo Tetris because it combines both those great puzzle games. Other than that, there are, you know, some question marks for the Switch. Puyo Puyo Tetris isn't coming out on launch. It's gonna take a couple months for that. The Nintendo Switch has a lack of memory. Compared to its competitors, the amount of storage on the Switch is abysmal. 32 gigabytes, that's it. At least there is room for expandable storage, though. I mean, the, the Nintendo has had expandable storage on its home console since the Wii, actually. But 32 gigabytes, that's not even an improvement from its predecessor, the Wii U. The Wii U originally came out with an 8 gigabyte version and a deluxe 32 gigabyte version, which then became the only version because the 8 gigabyte version sucked ass. But as a Wii U owner, I found that I haven't really actually been running out of space at all. The reason why is because I buy hard copies of the game. I buy them on. I buy the discs for them. I don't just download them because if you download them, it takes up more memory on the system. The Nintendo Switch, on the positive side, something I forgot to mention, is that its format for the games is no. It's not discs. It's on cartridges. Cartridges in the style of SD cards. Now SD cards are capable of storing way more memory than discs. Plus, they load so much faster. So that is a huge plus that could overcome this negative about its the system's storage. As expected, the Nintendo Switch has a low battery life. I mean, what do you expect? It's a high definition home console handheld hybrid. It's high definition when you take it on the go. So of course the battery life isn't going to be that long. It's three to six hours as stated by Nintendo themselves, actually. The low battery life could be a turnoff for some, but I think this negative might not be too bad because the Switch most likely should have chargers. You know, you can plug into a 
a wall when you take it with you. So it, it's most likely it's that will probably alleviate the issue. Plus, of course, I'm sure when you place it in the dock and play it on the big screen, it's going to charge it anyway. The switch isn't powerful. I was saying earlier in my pros that it is powerful. Okay, it's it is powerful, but for the time compared to other competitors, it is not. It's less powerful than the base PS4 and less powerful than even the base Xbox One. And for hardcore console gamers, that's gonna be a turnoff. And not only that, the system's just coming out. It's gonna be about $300, which is about the price of the base model PS4 and Xbox One now. And those who wanna get a, uh, a high-definition home console will be will be turned off by the Switch because it costs about the same as its competitors, but it's less powerful than its competitors, and it has far less games than its competitors because the com its competitors have been around since 2013, and the Switch is just coming out. So as a result, the Switch is going to suffer at the beginning. Hopefully, its portable capabilities will make it overcome those limitations will be a turn on for many people because they want to play on the go and for me it will be because I'm a grown adult approaching my 30s and I'm a busy guy so when it comes to gaming I most of the time I'm playing my 2DS because I can take it with me with the Switch I'm going to play high definition games on the go and that's going to be awesome I'm hoping for the Switch to succeed I want to see it succeed I don't like that Nintendo's becoming the butt of jokes right now uh, with the Wii U, but there are some pros and cons. There's reasons why the Switch could be amazing, and there's reasons why the Switch could fail and take Nintendo out of the console market completely, like what happened to Sega after they released the Dreamcast. And now look at Wargroove. Because Nintendo is being so neglectful with their franchises, an indie developer is making an Advance Wars game. It's just like Advance Wars, just the only difference is it takes place in the past. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and check out my video about five reasons why I think the Nintendo Switch could succeed.